Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine game series and our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're continuing our look at some of the amazing games that Leela is playing at night odds with all comers on Lee Chess. Um, yeah, I mean, leela has been playing uh, quite a few strong players, you know, rated 2600, 2700 at um, Blitz and Bullet and making some uh, amazing scores. Just really striking, you know, how Leela manages to, to generate dangerous play so quickly with a piece less. And um, yeah, how quickly things turn. I'm just sort of um, kind of, uh, you know, recalibrating my thoughts about, you know, what's possible um, early on. And um, and um, yeah, you know, how quickly a position turns, you know, even when you're a piece down, you know, how quickly it turns to dynamic equality, because uh, it's quite remarkable what uh, what Leela's doing here. Let's have a look at uh, this game, which um, yeah ended very quickly. Leela sacrifices another piece and then delivers mate. Simply amazing. So knight c3 from Leela, pretty common uh, move. e5 and now d4. We've seen a lot of uh, e4 from Leela as well, but d4 is another move that uh, Leela likes to play. Um, e takes d4, queen takes d4, knight c6, and queen a4. This, this actually, this uh, this line is not so uncommon with um, um, with white and uh, and the knight on g1. Um, in blitz, I've faced it uh, a number of times, I have to say. Um, here, black plays d5, and then Leela plays uh, a pretty uh, extraordinary move, the move knight b5. So what is white aiming for here? Well, I mean, you're just putting the, the threat of bishop f4 on the table and asking uh, black to do something about it. Now, obviously, you know, against uh, engines, the engines aren't particularly scared about anything. They'll sort something out against it. Um, but yeah, you know, for humans, these are these are quite tricky things to uh, to deal with. Um, and uh, especially, you know, at uh, not enormously long time controls. I mean, often the human players are playing something like five minutes plus three seconds, sometimes 10 minutes plus um, plus a few seconds. You know, it's um, uh, there's time to uh, to think through a few tactics, but uh, not really time to uh, to work them all out. And um, I think it's the the sheer breadth and the sheer scale of the tactics that Leela seems to be uncovering, even at early moments in the game. That's um, that's that's you know proving so problematic. I mean, the engines, in actual fact, they just want black to kind of ignore it, really. I mean, knight f6, bishop f4, and then bishop d6 is what the engines are suggesting. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, in principle, you, you, would, you would say that white's improved uh, its position there, right? I mean, you've got the two bishops and uh, you've given black double pawns. But, of course, you know, black's completely safe. Black's going to castle and uh, black is still a piece up. You know, not a bad way to uh, to do this somehow. But um, uh, black played the, the very natural a6, um, just attacking the knight and uh, waiting to see what white does. And Leela does something very confusing here again. I mean, bishop f4 is pretty normal and pretty much what my uh, my normal engines, uh, stockfish and torch, uh, are looking for. And black can play this bishop d6 idea or can even try uh, bishop b4 check to a5, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, but um, Leela here plays the move bishop g5, just uh, throwing in that curveball and uh, waits to see what um, what black is going to do here. Now, I mean, black's got a, a whole range of possibilities here. Uh, bishop b7 is not bad. Knight f6 is what the engines uh, wanted. I mean, they're not worried particularly about takes takes, castles and then bishop d7, just uh, dealing with the pin, threatening a takes b5. Again, you could sort of say, oh, well, white's achieved something. But of course, you know, what has white achieved in the grand scheme of things, uh, considering that white's a piece down? Maybe not so much. But, you know, it sort of seems reasonable when you're looking at it after the game. But during the game, you know, what black was doing, I saw this one, uh, this one live somehow, you know, seemed quite reasonable. And yet black on, it got into all sorts of trouble. Um, black played the move queen d7. Stepping out of the attack and uh, I mean, also breaking this pin and kind of preparing to play something like rook b8 and then, uh, you know, start playing b5 or, or d4 afterwards. But white throws in the move uh, castles and this is a little bit irritating because white's threatening the move rook takes d5 and after queen takes d5, knight takes c7. 
So that's already something a little bit confusing for um, uh, for uh, for Black to uh, uh, to deal with here. But um, Black thought he had that covered and played the move Rook B8. What's the idea? If Rook D5, we've got A takes B5. And obviously Rook D7, B takes A4. There's nothing for White. Uh, the Knight on uh, C6 is covering Mate on D8. Something like Queen E4, I guess Queen E6. And uh, that's pretty similar. I mean, uh, two pieces up, easy. And uh, well, what what do you expect uh, here? Maybe maybe Knight C3 or something like that. But yeah, I mean... Uh, it's not looking so bad for uh, for black, right? You've got all sorts of uh, of things that you could do. For example, knight c3 may be uh, d4 simply. And uh, well, the opposition of the queens means that uh, you know um, some uh, um, some exchanges of uh, of queens are in the air. And there's always moves like you know the queen moving away to f5 or g4 to attack the bishop and make this pin you know a sort of a possibility as well. You know, it looks like black's pretty comfortable on the tactics really you know white's trying to develop quickly but yeah okay you know white's gonna have to retreat but leela just does something incredible and uh and the funny thing is is that the engines you know they don't see this as particularly good for white but they don't think particularly that uh that white who's now going to be two pieces down after leela's move uh that the position has got significantly worse being one piece down or two pieces down leela just throws in e4 and uh, after a takes b5 bishop takes b5 and um, I mean, this looks some, something like a Morphe game, right? Doesn't it? I mean, you know, White's sacrificed now two pieces, the, the odds piece and the knight on b5. But I mean, almost all the pieces are uh, are really active now. Rook's coming into e1. I mean, you know, Black, Black's got to deal with uh, with stuff here. I mean, the first thing that uh, Black's got to deal with here is uh, is e takes d5, of course. Now, he plays a, Black plays a very clever move here, plays the move queen g4. And that's rather nice because um, um, you're uh, attacking this bishop on g5. Um, you're also getting out of this um, of this pin as well. And you're also kind of pinning this pawn because, uh, I mean, uh, e takes d5, you'll have queen takes a4. So that's, um, it looks like a, a pretty good move, right? Um, but the amazing thing here is that Leela just sort of keeps the pressure. You know, bishop's attacked. You're two pieces down. No worries. Just h4, keep the pressure. Black's problem now, and um, yeah, I mean that, that that's the kind of thing that's that's really tough for uh, for humans to deal with somehow. And um, you know, when you you can easily miss a move like h4, or you can easily underestimate that it's got any power, right? You're two pieces down. But then when you get to the position, you start getting a little bit worried. Um, I mean, moves like d takes e4, of course, are completely wrong because of rook d8 checkmate. That is very much like a Morphe game. Um, and what White's also got is this move, Queen A7, um, simply <laughs> attacking the Rook on B8. I mean, the Knight is pinned, so you can't take it. And you're just going to play Queen takes B8 next move. So, I mean, this looks really, really dangerous. And the engines are still saying, no, nah, it's fine, it's fine, you know, uh, uh, minus 3.96. But, you know, the positions that, um, that the engines consider to be absolutely fine for Black. You know, White's winning back a lot of material, picking up this Rook. Two pieces for the rook, uh, you know, black's got two pieces for the rook. So, yeah, probably still better. But, of course, for a human player, yeah, it feels like the momentum's gone completely wrong, right? I mean, how were, were you a piece up, you know, uh, on move um, on move one? And after move nine, move ten somehow, you're already in this total mess, you know. It, it, and having to think about giving back material, just, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big uh, psychological uh, burden for, uh, for a human player especially playing at a fast time control. I mean, Black plays something that looks quite sensible, d4. So just trying to make sure that the e-file doesn't get opened. Um, OK, the d-file will get opened, but you'll, you'll be able to block the access to the d8 square. Um, and um, yeah, you know, um, uh, you might be able to get your king uh, safe. But I mean, quite extraordinary to see, you know, how many black pieces still on the back rank here, king still in the centre. And Black's ended up moving the Queen twice, you know, and uh, it's a really strong player, right? I mean, you know, 2600, 2700 on, on Lee Chess Blitz Bullet. And um, somehow, yeah, getting so confused that uh, that you end up looking like you've ignored all the principles of, uh, of chess somehow. So F3 from um, from uh, from White and yeah, setting a, a rather um, little little bit of a dilemma for Black. Um, 
yeah, are you going to um, are you going to move the queen up? Are you going to move the queen back a bit more into the firing line? What are you going to do? And remember, there's this queen a7 takes b8 threat. Well, black played uh, queen g3 in this position. And now the engines say it's plus 1.5. So all of a sudden now, by move 12, white is basically completely winning. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the defense that black needs is, um, is yeah, it's is just too much, really. I mean, queen takes d4. We're threatening queen d8 checkmate here. Um, the nice thing is if you go bishop e6, I'm still going queen d8 checkmate because the knight on c6 is pinned. So what are you going to do? Uh, the engines can only suggest bishop d6. And after queen g7, bishop e6. So you're just going to give back this rook on h8. But yeah, OK. I mean, white's got uh, um, a rook and then three pawns for the um, uh, for the two pieces. So, you know, white's just winning. Uh, the, the black king's also completely unsafe. Uh, what black came up with was the move uh, f6. But actually, that's allowing force mate. Queen d8 check. King f7, bishop c4 check. Uh, bishop e6, if you go king g uh, six, then queen e8 is checkmate. And then the only thing, the thing that we've noticed a little bit is that, um, um, yeah, Leela doesn't seem to be great on the force mates um, in this, um, um, playing in this way, uh, because the engines are, are saying uh, bishop takes e6 check, um, king g6, and now uh, bishop f7 check takes and queen d5 check is the uh, is the checkmate. If king e8, we've got queen d7. And if uh, king g6, that's a very nice, I like this very much, h5 checkmate. And uh, the king can't go anywhere. The queen's protecting the, uh, the bishop on g5. Um, I mean, what Leela did was play queen d7 check and black resigned here. So, I mean, also effective king g6. There's um, uh, queen takes e6 and, you know, we're threatening queen f7 checkmate and uh, you can go king h5, white goes bishop e3 and was it mate in uh, five or six or something? We've got rook d5s coming in, queen f7s. The whole world of uh, nastiness is happening, queen f5 checks and uh, bishop uh, f7 as well. But uh, yeah, slightly surprising that Leela doesn't see that force mate. Um, might be an artifact of uh, of how it's playing, but um but yeah, I mean, brilliant play from uh, from Leela. You know, just um, again, it's I, I think the you know the, the games that are really super impressive are the ones that you see live, where you know you're sort of thinking, you know, what on earth is Leela doing? How do you keep this going? And you know, you're being just as surprised by moves like e4, and then just moves like h4. You know, and uh, you know something like f3 happens. You think, oh my god, you know what is Black supposed to do here? What's the point? I can't quite see the point, but I know there must be one. And what on earth is Black supposed to do here? Uh, you know, just really, really powerful play, and just really impressive. Uh, I mean, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm completely kind of rethinking my, um, my feelings and my instincts about, you know, what's possible for, uh, for White at early stages in the game, and with even with reduced firepower, because, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're down a piece already, one piece less to throw into the attack, and, and you're generating this sort of power. It's incredible. And um, of course, you know, this is sort of play that's not going to work against engines. But yeah, we don't play against engines. We play against human players. So really fascinating to see how, you know, frightening and uh, intimidating this is for uh, for human players to play against. So there we are. I hope you're uh, enjoying these. I, I feel it's a lovely mix, you know, having uh, Mariotti's amazing attacking games, you know, uh, interspersed with uh, with these efforts of uh, of Leela's. You know, it's really uh, kind of the same spirit somehow, you know, but just, uh, yeah, different eras and uh, and different methods. So hope you're enjoying them uh, a lot like I am and uh, hope to see you at the next videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take a look at my new books as well. Thanks for watching.